uh, my uh, distinct uh, pleasure to uh, to introduce uh, Jag Bagwal. He is uh, Ontario's uh, Agent uh, General in uh, Dallas. Uh, he was appointed uh, by the uh, Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, to strengthen trade and investment uh, between Ontario and the southern United States. He's going to tell us a little bit uh, more uh, about the geographic regions under his uh, jurisdiction. It is quite uh, vast. He is a graduate of the York University in Toronto and has uh, over two decades of sales and marketing experience in the private sector, in real estate. Jag uh, has worked with elected officials both at the provincial and federal levels, delivering positive impact in communities. Notably, he was uh, president of the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario in 2018, after serving uh, many years as a regional vice president. He's a firm believer in giving back to the community. Brampton uh, is his uh, second home to Dallas uh, now. <laughs> and he has uh, served as a board member of Ontario's uh, Peel Region Children's Aid Society and has uh, volunteered for bereaved families of Ontario. In 2017, he received uh, Ontario's Volunteer Service Award for his years of dedication uh, to community service. He's married and has, is the proud father of uh, two. Funny story, um, I'm celebrating this fall seven years uh, with the Brampton Board of Trade. And uh, Jog was one of the first uh, people I met back in 2014. He helped introduce me to uh, uh, Baal Gazel uh, at uh, the time, I was a federal MP. And uh, as we were leaving the meeting uh, with Mr. Gosel, uh, uh, Jog said to me, uh, um, Todd, I'd like to introduce you to Patrick Brown. I, I was unfamiliar with the name uh, Patrick Brown at the time, and Jog said, uh, "Oh, um, you, you'll 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 hear a lot about him very very soon," and uh, he's very correct. So my point in that uh, uh, meeting is uh, that uh, in that story is that Jog is a connector. And he is just perfectly fit for this uh, job. The premier was very wise in appointing him to it. He can, uh, he, he loves Brampton and uh, is so uh, well connected. Uh, Jog, welcome. We're so happy that you're able to join us here today. Thank you so much, Tar, for your kind introduction. It's such a great pleasure to meet each and every one, although it's virtual. Uh, but uh, it's such a great, uh, great pleasure. And uh, I've seen some familiar faces, but uh, we'll get to know the um, uh, uh, rest of you also as well. And uh, before uh, we joined, I was telling Todd, I said, I will be in Ontario at the end of this, uh, this month for a week. And uh, if uh, the time permits, then we may grab a cup of coffee and, uh, and chat a little bit more detail face to face. Uh, so um, I probably what I will do is I will, uh, uh, Lorraine, can I share my screen? All right. Okay. Can you see my screen? Great. Thank you very much. I, it's such a great pleasure, uh, uh, you know, to be to be with you. And uh, I'm just going to give you an overview of uh, first of all about our office, what our office does, and then dive a little bit more information into our region, uh, and uh, and also talk about a couple of uh, you know what. So what are the linkages are with Ontario? What are the sectors are that are emerging, uh, and uh, so also the trade. Uh, numbers that we're looking at, uh, you know, bilateral relations and the trade relations between the jurisdictions. Um, just to uh, quickly talk about what we do, what our office does. Uh, I will go to number point number two, a number of first job is really important one is to help uh, promote exports from Ontario into our jurisdictions. And the second thing that we, uh, that our also uh, another important uh, part of our uh, mandate is to help attract FDI into Ontario uh, and especially into advancement factoring uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, trade and investment side also. Uh, the third thing that we also talking about uh, is uh, facilitate uh, research and innovations what does that mean is research and development, connecting universities with each other so that the, not only the student exchange can happen, but also research and innovation can take place. And we are actually trying uh, 
uh, very hard to make those connections. Uh, and some of them we have uh, succeeded, but COVID, because of the COVID, we can meet in person. So they were still working on those, those relations. Uh, and I will also say that uh, government of Ontario just also have uh, created another agency is called Invest Ontario. And if you needed more information, I'll give you that information uh, also. And through that Invest Ontario, we have about a $400 million Invest Ontario fund to attract foreign FDI throughout the world. Our jurisdictions include uh, the regions is Florida, Texas, Alabama, Louisiana, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Mississippi, and Arkansas. They're really a big jurisdiction and we are a team of four. We are co-located within the Canadian consulate here uh, uh, in Dallas, Texas. And we work very collaboratively with, uh, with federal trade commissions, which we'll dive into a little bit later on. Just for a quick second, let me just... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, much better. Very good. Yeah. So and so so what we do? Let me just go back in there. And um, but what we do is also, as I said, we also uh, collaborate very uh, uh, with our federal trade commissioners as well. Uh, and uh, and some of these things that what we do because of the COVID is not. Uh, uh, you know, face to face conversations haven't happened yet, but but we still do B two B meetings. We arrange the meetings and we we transfer uh, information with each other uh, just to make sure that the, uh, that the information flow is there, and then the, look at the companies that uh, if they're looking for inf uh, information, uh, then we have to provide them in a timely fashion. Uh, also especially from the government of Ontario, uh, our export growth branch, they do a lot of work uh, 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 for export side of the, uh, from Ontario. If you're an Ontario company looking to export outside, uh, so they are doing a lot of work. And first thing that I will say is that export preparation is the key part of it. Uh, the NEPS program that is really good is called uh, New Exporters to the Borders Program. They have launched that. Under that, you also have uh, uh, the, the region specific webinars and the industry specific webinars that we arrange also as well. Uh, not only that, they also help with the e commerce web, uh, preparation and webinars, but also the pitch preparation, just in the case if there is a new company. Uh, if you're looking into a pitch preparation, so they are also uh, uh, help with that um, uh, uh, as well. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, export business mission. Uh, give you an example. Uh, we just did a virtual mission in here on IT side with, uh, 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 with airport, Dallas airport. So we had about eight or nine different Ontario companies to pitch uh, to pitch uh, for business uh, for Dallas Airport, and then the airport make a decision as to who they want to deal with. So these are the kind of missions we also do. Uh, we're also planning as we gear up the borders open uh, for the virus delegation. We are planning to have ministers here and the trade missions here, uh, hopefully in the in the third quarter. Uh, but we are just waiting for more information on the borders issue. Uh, and so there's quite a lot of that that will happen. And if you needed a further information, just let me know. Uh, but export grant uh, growth branch from ministry is really a key part to uh, a key part and a key player in the, uh, with us. So uh, when we talk about interior, a lot of time, the companies in here, okay, so what's, what's interior? What's the, what's the value proposition? I will touch only a couple of things in here. But, uh, the first thing that we always talk about is the energy side of it. It's the clean energy. They are most of the time and looking at advanced manufacturing, they always ask, okay, how, where's your energy come from? So I can just say that 95% of energy in interior is, from, is, is clean energy. And so that is really, really either it's nuclear or, uh, or it's wind, it's solar. Uh, and 95% of our energy is very clean. And then the ecosystem that we are talking about, thriving ecosystem, 
Uh, we always say research and development is pretty pretty uh, low in uh, comparative to other jurisdictions in Ontario. But I would say the sector like electric vehicle and the clean tech clusters are really a key part of it. As the government of Ontario just released a document, a discussion paper on, uh, on critical minerals, and there is a lot of demand that's coming from, uh, from the US side into the mining sector on that. So that is really a key part of it uh, that, that just keep in mind that, uh, and not only that, you know, we have um, all the five auto manufacturers who are in interior have invested almost of over about $6 billion into EV and battery operations. Battery is not gonna go anywhere if you don't have a critical minerals. So, uh, so interior, uh, we will have the policy development and it's a discussion paper by fall we will have all the information at this time, the supply chain, most of that is coming from, from China. Uh, just as I said, our jurisdiction, this is uh, give you uh, an idea about our trade and investment within our region. Uh, so when you look at it, Florida and Texas in our region, these both states are a trillion dollar economy. Texas economy is one point, over 1.7 trillion. That's even bigger than the Canadian economy is. This is a country in its own. This, their economy is ninth largest in the world. Uh, so our trade with Texas, even during the COVID had increased by 2.75%. Uh, and so that, talks, uh, that tells you a lot about resiliency and connectivity within our region. Uh, and Florida is definitely is another key state for us is a lot of tourism. Uh, that's happening in there. Uh, but when you look at the, you know, even Florida, Tennessee is really the second largest uh, trade and investment happening a bilateral trade. The reason for being is Tennessee is becoming really a key player in auto manufacturing. Uh, and because Tesla uh, Giga factory open in, uh, in Texas. So there is a lot of spillover of manufacturing and other um, trade and investment are happening in Tennessee. So I'm going to dive a little bit more into some of the sectors where the sectors are. So when you look at uh, in a region, Alabama, Alabama is aer uh, aerospace and aviation is really a big factor because of Airbus. Uh, and uh, uh, they're also coming very strong in bioscience uh, also as well. Because we know that the, the, uh, the pharmaceutical and bio sector in Brampton is pretty strong. So that is a second uh, that, that uh, uh, and, and, the, and Alabama is doing a lot of work on, uh, on attracting businesses. And also we, we have a great relationship with Alabama and they are really coming out uh, on all full cylinders on different parts of, uh, of their economy. And they are really open uh, to have trade and investment um, from different regions. Uh, then we look into Arkansas. Uh, when you look at our region uh, in Arkansas, we have Walmart headquarters is in Arkansas. We have Tyson Food headquarters in Arkansas because in Brampton food and beverage sector is really big. Uh, and that is really a big one in these two sectors. And third thing that JB Hunt uh, on transportation and logistics is also their headquarters in there. Uh, so Arkansas is really a key state for us and, um, uh, and because of uh, 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 these businesses there. Uh, and, and then we look into Florida and Louisiana. Florida is aviation and aerospace, 100%. They're moving really a big into clean tech also. Uh, as you know, there's a lot of businesses are moving from, uh, companies moving from New York. Uh, from California. So where are they going? Uh, they're going either to Florida or, or they're coming to Texas. So we'll little bit talk more into uh, when we come to Texas also as well. Another one, uh, IT, information technology and life sciences are also becoming really big in Florida as well. I was in Florida about, um, uh, about a month ago uh, to develop those relationships and uh, uh, and just to you know, dive into some of those sector specific information uh, and meet with the people. So, you know, Florida is coming out in the IT side is really big way. Uh, 
Um, and then Louisiana, there's a lot of uh, uh, sectors that, that, uh, that combine with the interior, especially in agri, um, agribusiness and automotive side of that. Um, Mississippi and Oklahoma, yes, there are, there are quite a lot of uh, healthcare and tourism and film industry is pretty big in there. Uh, and the IT industry is really becoming big. And, and in Oklahoma, uh, is manufacturing and re renewable energy is becoming really a, a big sectors in those. Uh, but when you look at Oklahoma, transportation and logistics is also becoming really big. So those are the industries that are that have emerged uh, during this COVID uh, period. And let's, uh, let's dive a little bit more into Tennessee, as I said before. Uh, when you look at automotive sector, uh, electric vehicle manufacturing, so a lot of spillover because of, uh, uh, of Giga Factory happening in Austin is happening going into Tennessee also. Uh, healthcare and life sciences is also pretty big there. Uh, uh, so rubber and ceramic, uh, ceramics and glass. That's another web, uh, big one in Tennessee. And there's a lot of German companies and from uh, throughout the world uh, have established their headquarters there. And uh, interestingly, I will be in Tennessee uh, end of this uh, week. Uh, there is a Southern Legislative Conference happening in Nashville, Tennessee, where you have local, provincial, and federal people all come together with businesses to develop policies in the southern states in our region. Uh, so I will be meeting with quite a few folks in there and not only the business side, but also on the political side too. Uh, now, uh, taxes. Uh, I'll dive a little bit more information about taxes because that's our headquarter, that's where, that's where we are and there's a reason why we are here. Uh, taxes is uh, from our eight states is the biggest trade and investment and bilateral trade with interior. It's about $17.5 billion Canadian on a yearly basis uh, with taxes. Um, polymer industry and auto industry, 100% uh, is really a big in here. Uh, as I said, um, uh, Tesla is opening their Giga factory in Austin. Toyota is already here uh, and uh, they're also looking to connect an autonomous vehicle. But when we look at uh, what's happening uh, within the US and the companies coming from California and New York, Hewlett Packard has may, uh, announced that they are moving their headquarters to Texas. Uh, and uh, Oracle has uh, made a decision to move their headquarters to Texas. Charles Schwab Financial Company has moved, uh, has opened up their big uh, offices in here and also in Florida. So I'll dive a little bit more into that, into like four uh, cities that I will, I will talk a little bit more in details if you permit me, because this was really an important state. When you look at Austin, Austin has become an IT town. It is really becoming booming with, the, uh, um, with IT. Uh, uh, companies coming in from California and also from within. But within, the, it's a short distance from uh, Austin is San Antonio. As you know, the Brampton is also becoming hub for cybersecurity. So there is a lot, and Austin has become a really hub for cybersecurity. A couple of reasons why. It's the biggest military presence in, in, uh, in, in San Antonio. And the second thing, that, uh, their health sector is really big there. And I've been approached just recently um, uh, by UTSA, University of Texas in San Antonio, to, uh, to have uh, the, some cross connections between the universities here um, in, in interior. So we'll be reaching out uh, as soon to them. So, and we will be def hosting a, uh, a, cyber, uh, a cyber event, cyber security event with the San Antonio at the end of September, if any of the companies would want, like to get more information, we're definitely happy to provide that. When you look at Dallas, Dallas has become a hub for aviation and aerospace because of you have American Airlines headquarter here, Southwest has a headquarter in here, uh, and when you look at Houston, NASA, uh, so it is really, especially for OEMs, uh, is really a, um, a becoming uh, a big uh, kind of connectivity on aviation and aerospace side. Uh, but when you look at, um, at Houston, Houston 
was considered as a still considered as oil, gas, and energy. But it's also emerging in two sectors. One sector is life sciences uh, because of uh, Texas Medical Center. That is, I think, in the top five in the US, is huge uh, in the life sciences side of it. The second thing that is happening is the clean tech side. And so they are becoming really big, uh, big in that, and especially in oil and gas, uh, carbon capture technologies that are coming in. Uh, so those kind of things that are really uh, changing the landscape in here. Uh, I think that in the next two years, uh, taxes will, will shift a uh, little bit uh, uh, from, from all gas and energy, it will still stay a major force, but into the technology side, because the companies that are moving in here, um, when you look at the Biden administration has also uh, um, uh, looking to uh, uh, meet their targets, uh, gas emission targets, that are also really um, promoting electric vehicles and, and battery uh, uh, battery operation. So, so taxes have become really a key is it, uh, state for us, not only that econ economy, uh, size of the economy, but also changing uh, sectors and it, it in there. Um, yeah, so it, if you need more information, I, I can provide you with that information, uh, sure on that. Uh, so let's, let's look at the business landscape. So a lot of time, I can tell you that the companies coming from uh, the US, uh, they want to do a partnership, they want to do collaboration, they want to invest in Ontario. The question that always happens is why Ontario? So what's, what's happening in Ontario and why we should be do partnership, why should be collaboration, why we move to Ontario? Uh, and so that is really become a key part for us uh, to tell the story about Ontario also as well. As you know, the Ontario is um, economic engine uh, for, for Canada. We are uh, represent, we represent about 40% of the population, not only that, the 40% of the Canadian GDP. Uh, and we are the seventh largest subnational economy in North America. Uh, but access to the market, this is where the key things that happen for us. And that's why we say collaborate and partnership with Ontario companies and so Canadian companies is a free trade deals with 50 countries. What does that mean? A lot of time people ask, I said, well, listen, in that scenario, do you have an access to over 1.5 billion more consumers than you have otherwise? Uh, and um, so that, that, that tells a lot of us, uh, speaks volume about Canada, about Ontario, how we are in, kind of interconnected toward the world. Uh, but look at our daily two-way trade between Ontario and US. About is a billion dollar Canadian. That's about 2018 figures. 2019 at least almost the same. Uh, but that what does that mean? That we are close to about 400 billion dollar trade with the U.S. So if I, you know, we always say if Ontario were a country, we'll be we will be the third largest trading partner with the U.S. So that's the resiliency of, uh, of, of Ontario. So there is a, there's a, so much to speak about it. And this is the, what we, a lot of time the companies do ask us, why do we want to collaborate? Why we want to partnership? So what does Ontario has? So this is really, really a good part. Last one I would definitely will touch the people. The strength of Ontario is also its people. We have welcomed people from more than 150 countries. We speak more than 200 languages. I said, if you want to go to United Nations, go to Toronto and go to GDA, you will see the UN right there. Uh, so it's an amazing talent that we have throughout the world and that's where the connectivity is happening. Uh, but we also growing market, uh, you know, especially from, uh, from from, from Ontario, we have about 142 million con consumers within day's drive to, uh, to Toronto. This is what we say, if you establish a partnership and a collaboration or establish a business in Ontario, this is, uh, you, you're not that far away from home as well. And then you also have, especially for Ontario companies, this is exactly what the numbers look like. This is how, uh, how much that, that we have exposure to the marketplace in here. 
Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, the global trade uh, with, uh, with 50 countries. This is almost like, you know, they have combined GDP of 67 trillion in Canadians uh, and 52 trillion in USD throughout the world. And this is the story that we tell that if you are uh, in uh, partnership uh, or a collaboration or invest in interior, this is what you get. Uh, as a consumer, and and this is really a huge buying power uh, that you are exposed to the marketplace. Just a little bit, I will dive. You know, this elephant in the room is COVID. That's what we're talking about it, uh, and uh, to see where the things are. When you look at the trend in the total trucks entering or re-entering Ontario from US per month, when you look at it, the numbers number has significantly gone down. And, uh, uh, but having said all of that, we, uh, Gary, we talked about before that, uh, the supply chain. Uh, supply chain throughout the COVID was still robust, still, we didn't have food shortages and stuff like that, like the, the manufacturing was still going on. That doesn't mean to say that it's not broken. There's a huge uh, things that, that after we emerge out of the COVID together to reestablish those, uh, the supply chain will be the key part of it. Uh, when you look at the tourists that are coming in uh, into Ontario, it's almost like, I mean, with the waters are closed, nobody is coming in. So this is going to be a challenge. Um, so where it stands, uh, it seems like the, the our last, um, uh, the borders are closed until 21st of July. So we will wait till then uh, just to see um, uh, how does, you know, what does happen then? Will the borders will open and in what capacity uh, that will happen? Uh, especially in, in the taxes that I can tell you right now, everything is open. Like we, if you're fully vaccinated, CDC guidelines are, if you are together, you don't have to wear a mask. Uh, and that doesn't mean that if I get into a cab or Uber or, you know, I don't have to, they still require you to wear a mask. Uh, and airlines are also st still trying to wear a mask. Uh, so, uh, and a lot of um, uh, this talk coming about immunity passport or vaccine passport, we would say. Texas and Florida has already said, no, they will never, they will not accept it. They will not demand it. They will not, you know, you know they have already issued um, some of uh, 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 through the legislation that it'll be illegal to do that. So just in the case, because why I'm saying this, because a lot of times like every state and every jurisdictions have different policies. And so just in the case, if, uh, if some states do, some states don't, we need to know where we're going and what the, uh, what the restrictions are. Um, but one thing I tell you that if you're coming from Canada into US, uh, you don't have to quarantine. Uh, you don't have to, uh, you know, whether you are vaccinated or unvaccinated. Uh, when I came in October, I didn't have to uh, quarantine. So uh, that was a difference between, between uh, both the jurisdictions, uh, but certain uh, states did ask that to do that. So, so I just want to touch a little bit on the COVID side of it. And uh, uh, for us, like for as a new office, it was difficult uh, uh, because our old meetings, 99% were all virtual. Um, and it just started about uh, a couple of months ago, about two months ago, um, uh, when I got fully vaccinated to start traveling. Uh, <clears throat> and so that's the, my first conference will be in Southern Legislative Conference. That's happening uh, um, and this week, uh, that will be one uh, first major conference that's happening face to face. So if the, <clears throat> if you need, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, if you need more information on this, we can always <clears throat> provide you more information on this, on the, on the COVID side, on the vaccination side, and what the states are looking into, so that when you're coming and entering in, in Canada, so that you know, it's US, so that you know what you're dealing with. Uh, we always say that in Ontario, we are connected, connected toward the world. Um, our Pearson International Airport is one of the largest in, uh, uh, in, uh, in North America. And, uh, and not only that, you know, our borders also, uh, 
uh, like, you know, especially in Ontario, we have 14, 14 border crossing with the US. So this is the transportation and logistics and the company doing business. It, <clears throat> Is the ease of doing business with interior that's what we always highlight uh, uh, so i just want to dive in a little bit this is my uh coming near to the end of my presentation so i will I'm happy to take any questions if there are any uh these are some of the 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 conferences that are happening i know uh some of them have asked that if um uh, you know, keep us informed if there is an event or, or uh, conferences happening in our region. So these are some of the, uh, the conferences happening, offshore technology that's happening on clean tech uh, on IT side is in, uh, in Houston next month. I will be attending that. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, in Louisiana, that's about, uh, you know, the solar panels, wind energy, smart cities, and uh, Move America is about connected and autonomous vehicle mobility. Uh, that's happening in September, uh, and uh, the and uh, advanced and uh, composite and advanced uh, material expo. Uh, and last one I would uh, emphasize is uh, is Florida International Trade and Cultural Expo. That's really a great. Uh, uh, if you can attend that, that would be a great one because. Why I say that? Because uh, Florida is gateway to Latin America also as well. So there is a lot of companies coming in from Latin America and will be part of that. So when I was in Florida, so I was invited um, uh, to, to present uh, and we will be attending that, uh, that this conference is really a vitally important um, uh, conference. And if uh, you want, you know, if any businesses or any audience uh, want more information, uh, Todd, please let us know through you, then uh, uh, we'll be happy to provide that information uh, and uh, what are the services are, and they are looking forward to, to this. Um, and uh, uh, so these are some of them. There are also, uh, for next year, we will have a little bit more information if there is any other uh, and, you know, we will share the information with you, then you can share with your members as, as going forward, Todd. Well, thank uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a key part of it. As the economy is open, I be, uh, you know, face-to-face -face conversation cannot replace the virtual one, I tell you. <laughs> so this will be a really a key part for us and that we can uh, give you uh, more information. Lastly, I will say uh, from my side, we work with three consulate offices. So one is in Dallas, Texas, we are co-located. Another consulate that we work with is Florida. Uh, for, uh, you know, Susan Harper, Consul Journal is fantastic. Really, really a great, uh, the trade commissioners there. And the third uh, Consul Journal that we work with is uh, Consul General from Atlanta. Uh, so our eight states come under three Consul General's regions. Uh, so it's a, so a, in the case, if we needed to attract a region, also definitely please don't hesitate to reach out. But, but also uh, a reminder that Ontario has offices in, uh, in Chicago. We have offices in uh, San Francisco. We have office in New York. We have an office in Washington, DC. So if there is any connectivity, any business or any members, Todd, if you're looking to connecting with any one of, uh, of those offices, please do let me know. We're here to serve and uh, an interior, especially through those service uh, offices, uh, um, uh, you know, we, we help businesses. So um, yeah, so that's, uh, so that's, about, uh, that's about it. And, uh, 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 that's my email there if there is any information that you want to and uh, please uh, don't hesitate to share you know uh, uh, to do that and uh, Jag, thank you uh, so much uh, uh, and for providing your email there as well uh, I do see a question in the chat and I do want to open it up to everyone's uh, questions uh, uh, but thank you uh, for that and if you have a, a question please uh, raise uh, your hand uh, or put it in the, the chat. Thank you for that overview. I mean, your small team of four people are covering uh, huge areas, eight states. 
thanks for uh, diving into that for us and telling us about uh, Austin and Dallas and Houston, Huntsville, Alabama, uh, uh, the opportunities by sector there, uh, the clean tech uh, opportunities. Uh, thanks also for letting us know about events uh, where uh, Ontario companies, Brampton companies can connect. Uh, we'll look forward to the Cyber One at the end of uh, September. Um, you're uh, a great ambassador for our province, and uh, uh, it's always good to remind us of this good story that we have to tell uh, about Ontario and our people. Appreciated uh, your thoughts on the trends in the business environment. Uh, and yeah, your link to the federal government in America. Uh, the consulates, the three uh, trade uh, consul generals there, uh, as well as Ontario's uh, offices in Chicago, San Francisco, New York, and Washington. What a great uh, overview. Really, really do appreciate uh, that. Um, I see one question, and um, it's uh, from Bob Hornablow, uh, BSC uh, Solutions, uh, providing uh, IT solutions for local companies. <clears throat> and his question is about controlled goods uh, manufacturer certification. Is there a, an Ontario uh, controlled uh, goods manufacturers or, or consultants? Uh, uh, Bob and his uh, business, there's a lot of U.S. companies uh, that do uh, uh, subcontract to Ontario companies to supply defense contracts, etc. And uh, Bob, maybe you have a more detailed uh, question, but uh, uh, it's in the chat there. And uh, um, Bob was just looking for, uh, wondering, I think, if there's a directory and how his company might be able to get on it. Yeah, definitely, thanks, uh, Todd. Thanks for the questions. What you can do is if, uh, if uh, you know, I can ask the ministry to provide all the information. Um, one thing I didn't mention that, you know, also definitely we are a very small team. Uh, what we have, the ministry that is, uh, you know, the support and systems that are available for us. Um, not only that, we have sector specific people in the ministry that we can answer if there is a sector specific questions. Uh, so definitely, if you can elaborate a little bit more in detail, send me a quick email and I will connect with the ministry. And so we can get you uh, get you the right answer. Fantastic. That's great. Thank you, uh, Jog. Um, Kirk, I know that uh, uh, you are uh, uh, close to uh, new business in the States. Uh, Gary, uh, you're doing a push as well. Any other questions uh, for uh, for Jog? Yeah, a question. It's Kirk here. Uh, question for you. The Buy American uh, Act, uh, it seems to have quieted down with Trump not in power as much anymore. It seems to be more political than it is. Uh, we talk to our customers and they don't seem to have a problem, but can you give us what's your feeling these days with the Buy American? Kirk, that's an excellent, excellent question. I Sorry, I didn't touch on that. And uh, uh, part of my, uh, another hat that I wear multiple hats is also advocacy work Kirk, in here. Uh, not only on the Buy American, but also software lumber uh, and a couple of other uh, things that we foresee that is happening. Uh, you know that Bi you know, Biden administration has revived the Buy American policies and uh, they have. Uh, it's before the Congress right now. Uh, and uh, we watch very closely. I'll give you an example. The Texas state legislation has passed, again, the Buy American policies here. Uh, and uh, so it hasn't been uh, uh, made into law yet. It's, I think it's going to be third reading, if not mistaken. So, uh, so we watch very closely. And uh, 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 it hasn't amplified a lot uh, that, okay, you know what, this is what will, you know, this is what's going to happen. Uh, but what we are also looking at, you know, if the federal infrastructure fund coming from the from the Biden administration uh, transferred to the state governments, are they coming with any strings attached? Right. So, uh, you know, and so especially on the steel and uh, uh, and the manufacturing side on those. Uh, so we're watching that 100 percent Kirk. I think uh, uh, it hasn't been amplified as much as. Uh, uh, that we thought, but that doesn't mean that it's quite down, it's died down because there are certain states uh, starts to revamp and redo the, the biomedical policies. Uh, and especially, as I said, in Texas, as they have. And uh, uh, to me, uh, when, I, when I met with Secretary of Commerce in Texas, uh, I did raise that. Uh, so we are your, uh, the best friend and uh, your strongest ally. Uh, and your uh, uh, your uh, your strong neighbor, 
uh, and uh, these policies, uh, you know, kind of uh, in, the, in the business related in, in the business environment. What we want is open and transparent procurement. And just to tell you that, uh, that Ontario is, we are pursuing CEPAs, SIPA, so Strategic Investment Procurement Agreements. So these are subnational agreements between the state to state so that there is an open and transparent procurement on both sides of the border. So that was my, my message was to Secretary of Commerce here in Texas. And the same message that I had compare, uh, conveyed to the Secretary of Commerce in Florida also as well. And this is kind of messaging Kirk is also happening when I'm uh, also in Tennessee because of, we were meeting quite a lot of federal and, uh, and local people also as well just to make sure that we are on top of it. That's a part of our advocacy work. And, uh, and there's quite a few other things that are happening, but uh, you know, I'm not able to just say much, but, uh, uh, but we are watching very closely all of these things. Very, Great very question. good, Jack. Thank you uh, for that. And uh, very good workaround on the sequence. We'll uh, keep an eye on, uh, uh, on that for sure. Um, Gary, I don't know if you had a question. I know uh, Jayesh, uh, Bagar, and Teresa has an uh, important question as well. No, uh, I, I, I'm good. It's, uh, Jayesh, you want to have an observation? Yes. Uh, good morning, Jack. It's great to connect with you again. And uh, good morning, folks. Uh, it's an amazing morning with loads of uh, information and excitement brewing up as the market opens up. And uh, just for others, a quick introduction. So I represent as senior advisor for investment attraction with the city of Brampton's economic development department. And of course, as uh, Jag and team, you've been so fabulous in terms of providing that insight, that support, uh, the, the kind of uh, you know, traction that we uh, connect in terms of generating the leads. So uh, I very much look into Texas and New Jersey as my forte and I totally resonate with uh, Jag's insight that it's a great opportunity to you know, uh, connect with some of the institutions, some of the leads, and of course, Invest Ontario and uh, Trade Commissioner Services has been phenomenal in their support. So, Jag, uh, just I would definitely have an offline chat with you for sure. Uh, but just to uh, help and uh, get all of us involved, as uh, mayor led uh, FDI mission is expected uh, in the fall, uh, specifically towards the uh, second and third week of October. And uh, we would be actually covering a typical kind of a virtual FDI mission uh, within uh, Austin, uh, Texas, and New Jersey. So there are quite a few uh, important events that we are planning in terms of a round table meetings and uh, Great. Uh, connecting with new prospects. So this would be an opportunity to connect with you. Uh, that's uh, good, Jayesh. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, that's good. And uh, uh, virtual meetings are good with Austin, but in real life is uh, even uh, better. You, you have to stay at the Driscoll uh, Hotel and uh, some great uh, music uh, there as well. Father, before I start with you, uh, I see a question from Teresa from Vision Transportation. I'm wondering if you could uh, allow me to take that one uh, first. Uh, uh, it's uh, picking up on something that... Uh, uh, that Jog uh, has said earlier. Um, Jog, you, you spoke about U.S. companies working with Canadian companies and leveraging the free trade agreements uh, that Canada uh, has. Um, is, do you have an example of this or um, would it require the setting up of a, of a joint uh, uh, venture? Yeah, definitely. I th there's quite a few things that are happening, especially on uh, on the tech side, also on the logistics side, also as well. And um, so, give you an example. The, as I said, the supply chain uh, that was very robust during the COVID times. Uh, and uh, so, a lot of companies that, when the US companies are looking into Ontario, especially into Canada, uh, they're looking at, as I said, the talent. They're looking at the, uh, you know, the, uh, the company, but also the economy on the side, also. Uh, and um, uh, so those are the kind of things that dialects happen. What we usually do is uh, give you an example. If the company approaches us, it's a lesson we are looking into. Let's suppose, give you an example. There was a company that reached out to us on Robo Eats. They are in robotics kitchen. Uh, and um, so they said, we, we are in that, uh, you know, this ecosystem. And so what we did was we connect with them with uh, quite a lot of food and beverage sectors here. 
So then we let, let two of the companies, you know, carry on the conversations because, and uh, uh, another thing that I can tell you that it is a company right here in Texas, uh, they have signed uh, some um, manufacturing agreements uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Ontario, especially on the COVID-19 related because their products claims to kill 99% uh, of the airborne COVID, COVID bacteria into, into HVAC sector. So, uh, and they have patent technology, which is being implemented here in Texas also. So we have connected them. And then the, uh, you know, the mutual agreement between the business to business or how they want to proceed. So we will make, we, we connect the businesses and then the business to business decisions are made between the businesses we don't get involved in. very good yeah thank you jog for that and uh, those connections those meetings and the uh, sharing of that information is very helpful helpful for whatever decision uh uh brampton company might make and uh, teresa i apologize for misidentifying uh, you i know you're doing some uh, great research uh, on helping ontario companies uh, to export uh uh but I, uh, but not with vision transportation i'm misidentified uh, i apologize for that butter uh the ambassador of brampton meet the Ontario Agent General. I know you know each other many times, but go ahead, sir. It's good to see you today. Todd is always very generous with that to topic, but uh, but in all honesty, you know, when you when you work as a global equity manager, that that ambassador to the whole world thing comes naturally. Um, Jack, I'm going to actually now ask two questions. First one is a bit more generic. Um, you know, Canadian uh, stock exchanges, uh, U.S. stock exchanges, so capital markets in general are reflecting all-time high valuations. Uh, we're seeing very robust activity year to date here in Toronto in terms of companies accessing capital. Last year, they raised over $5.5 billion in new listings. We don't get to see that data very closely when it comes to mergers and acquisitions between Ontario businesses and jurisdictions you cover. What sort of appetite are you seeing uh, you know, as, as money is uh, available at very low cost as well as uh, because of the high valuations of the businesses, their profits to be taken. What sort of appetite are you seeing for mergers and acquisitions in the private equity space between Ontario companies and companies in US? And, and then I'll ask a follow up question yeah. later. That was a good question, uh, uh, but there's a quite a bit that's happening, especially on margin and acquisitions here. Um, especially within the U.S., though, because the border is not being opened, a lot of companies can't go back and forth, kind of thing. I have got a few executives that are waiting to uh, to go to Ontario to to talk to the people, uh, to the companies, and uh, they want to acquire and then invest in. So, in the virtual world, it takes a little longer. Um, uh, but the, you know, especially you know when during the COVID, what happened when the economy slowed down a little bit, all gas and energy, the money was surplus that was sitting around. It went into uh, into a lot of margin and acquisitions, and we are seeing a huge growth in margin and acquisitions, especially in taxes. Uh, not only that, the venture capital fund they are look they're hungry for for new ventures. And uh, we did a few one Ontario companies in here, uh, especially on the, on the life sciences side of it. Uh, one was a research and development into cancer uh, detections. Uh, so, you know, and uh, PPE. So there is quite a bit that is happening, but it's kind of slowed down on the cross border side because of, uh, of the border uh, closures. Yeah, due diligence becomes a bit difficult in the private exactly. equity space, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so follow up question. Um, I just saw. So, I'm putting on my uh, uh, Todd. I'm putting on my hat as a director for Canada Turkey Business Council for a second. I just saw a massive listing uh, for a, for the first Turkish uh, online retailer, Pepsi Burada, on Nasdaq uh, mm -hmm. just last week. They raised over 500, uh, close to 500 million dollars, four billion dollar company, right? It's an e-commerce company. Uh, and just like Amazon, Amazon has a big, pres uh, big presence in Turkey, by the way. Companies like these are perfectly positioned to facilitate multilateral trade and not just bilateral trade. So on the Canada-Turkey Business Council side, we're very, very closely in touch with American Chamber of Commerce in Turkey. Our American cousins are very well represented, especially in the technology continuum from Microsoft to, uh, as I said, Amazon, to Google, to Facebook, everybody has a very robust uh, presence in Turkey. What sort of appetite is there in, at the provincial level to facilitate some technology-related interactions between stakeholders in Ontario 
uh, in the US and in Turkey. Good questions, uh, brother. There's huge appetite, uh, right? When you look at, there's a, quite a few companies when you look at Kitchener, uh, Kitchener Waterloo that just come in. Flare, if I'm not mistaken, that comes to my mind, Arctic Wolf and Cybersecurity. On the e-commerce side, there's a few other ones that have come up Kitchener Waterloo side. Uh, that valuation flare is about, if I'm not mistaken, nine to eleven billion dollars. That that's their valuation, actually. That's just a small company in the last three to four years that happened. Universally, yes, there is a lot of appetite, but uh, you know we have to make a business case, right? So, uh, and I'm happy to to talk more in detail on that, and I can. Uh, I definitely will direct with the ministry uh, side, brother, if we have specific uh, something in mind. I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. That's our job is, and we are um, uh, quite a few uh, ones that as the borders open, they are waiting uh, to get into Ontario and to talk their due, uh, due, due diligence. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a great question. There is 100%, uh, you know, full cooperation from the, from the government side. And as I said, an Invest Ontario Fund has about 400 million seed money to help the companies attract FDI into Ontario. So that will be a great opportunity. And this fund uh, just established a couple of months ago. So still, you know, putting, uh, the, developing the policies and uh, uh, things. But once it's, uh, it's up and running, I'll let you know. But, I, you know, if there is any specific Please don't hesitate to connect with me. I'll, I'll connect with the ministry and then we can all jump on a call. Well, that's that's great, uh, Jag. Uh, thank you very much for that. And thank you for the questions, uh, Bader. Um, hopefully this is the start of conversations. I see uh, Kirk's uh, finger is up. Uh, do you have another question? Uh, before sure. We... Yeah, One go more ahead. question. Uh, one of our challenges is, uh, and this is more personal directly from Brandon Steel, is the weight of steel, very heavy. So shipping, logistics, and of course, the further south you're shipping, the more costs go up. So, uh, you know, just curious, what recommendations? I mean, uh, and, and it's hard to get trucks these days. We all hear the trucking issues in the trucking industry. So, uh, you know, once again, I'm all for selling to the south, but all of a sudden a truck that cost me 1500 to 2000 to get into the northern states is now four to 5000 And your road restrictions are... 40, 45,000 pounds. So it, it, it's, I'm trying to overcome some of these roadblocks sometimes, Jag, and it, it, it is transportation is one of our, our, our killers. So. I, totally, you know, I agree with that, uh, Kirk. And um, uh, especially, you know, with the shortage of uh, the drivers and the trucking industry, it is causing a lot of impact in here also as well. Uh, when I was in Florida, the, the challenge that I, you know, I heard was there is no truck parking. So a lot of truckers don't want to go. They are parking on the side of the road and uh, uh, and uh, the police is giving them tickets. He said, well, listen, you can't park it like that. So, so they are, you know, there is uh, roadblocks to sometimes to transportation and delivery. So I, yes, Florida has a lot of, uh, you know, ports and stuff like that. It's being a free trade zone. You can supply them uh, uh, things there and then then carry on from there onwards. Um, uh, but it depends on which state you're supplying to, right? So, uh, so it's in Laredo, pretty close to the, there is a port close to Mexico also as well. Um, uh, so I can give you more, more uh, information, Kirk, on that, that if you just can be a quick email just to see what we can do. Uh, and it, it will depend upon uh, your jurisdiction where you, uh, your, uh, you will be, you know, supplying to. Uh, okay. I would say that the closest one will be the ports that, uh, that that will be the key part of it. But then again, then you have to transfer from there to the destination. Uh, so that's another part of logistics. So, uh, but I would definitely be really happy to do a, you know give you more information on that. Uh, you know, I, I'll connect with the ministry to see what other things we can do for you. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Great. Are there any other questions? I'm noticing we're at the top of the hour. I have a couple important announcements. Uh, if there aren't uh, any other questions, I'll get right to, to them. Again, let's let this be the beginning of a conversation. We're happy to uh, uh, share Jog's information and yours with him if you want follow-up uh, conversations. Uh, very, very good discussion here today. Thank you, Jog, uh, for uh, that. Jog's uh, email is uh, now in our chat uh, as well. 
Um, we talked today uh, focused specifically on uh, United States opportunities. Um, next month, we're getting together with our trade network. Again, we usually get together bi-monthly, but uh, lots of trade information now that uh, restrictions are opening, pandemics, uh, we can see the tunnel at the end of uh, the pandemic. And one of our speakers next uh, uh, um, uh, month, August 24th at 8 a.m., is uh, Kiko Onozuka, who is the head of public affairs with the uh, Expo 2020 Dubai. Uh, I know it's 2021, but uh, not unlike the Euro uh, uh, Cup finals, uh, Expo 2020 got uh, delayed. This is an amazing event for you to really test the waters from every different country in uh, the world. Uh, it's in Dubai, it's uh, from starts in October, goes uh, uh, until the spring, I believe, or maybe it's full year. I know that uh, I have earmarked uh, to go in November to tie it in with the World Chambers Federation uh, meeting. I can tell you more about that as well. But on August 24th, uh, Akiko will be with us and will be outlining opportunities for Canadian companies in Dubai. She is with the Consulate General of Canada in uh, Dubai. And so mark that in your calendars for October 24th. We also have another guest speaker that same day and uh, His Excellency Abdul Hamid, uh, Consul General for uh, Pakistan and uh, Azhar Hussain uh, will be talking about Pakistan's trade potential and connecting Pakistan businesses with key business sectors here in Brampton, the investment opportunities between Pakistan in, uh, and, and Brampton. Um, so hopefully you can join us uh, for that. Some very practical information being shared uh, there. Um, other events that are coming up, uh, we uh, like to connect businesses, connect you with people, connect you with suppliers, customers, programs. And we do that through something called our open door discussions. So noon next week, July 15th, we have our open door discussions where we talk about challenges you may have, opportunities you want to capture. And it's a nice small group uh, meeting and uh, hopefully you can make us for that. August 15th is a deadline. August 15th is a deadline for top 40 under 40. I want you to think about individuals in your company, those stars, rising stars, emerging leaders. Think about your customers or suppliers, young people under 40 that are really making a difference, going the extra yard. Let us know. We have an online uh, application. We'll put that in the, uh, the chat room. Uh, for you, but the deadline is, oh, I'm sorry, August 16th is what I see uh, here. Uh, please let the folks know this is a wonderful program, very inspirational to see the upcoming uh, leaders. Speaking about upcoming leaders, I wanted to introduce three people on today's call that you may not have met uh, yet. Uh, Kevin Draper is uh, a new uh, staff person with the Brampton Board of Trade. He is bringing some tremendous value for our local companies in a government relations role. He's our manager of government relations and strategic communications. Uh, he will be working closely with me on the relevant issues that are impacting you at the municipal or regional level, at the provincial or the federal level. So uh, Kevin, uh, welcome to the Brampton uh, Board of Trade. Maybe you could put your uh, email in the chat. I also want to introduce you to Jennifer Oldham. Jennifer is our manager of community operations. We have so many different communities, be it the trade community, be it the business development community, uh, uh, a women's network called uh, Con uh, Connect uh, uh, Work. Uh, many different communities are within our business community. And uh, uh, Jennifer has the big job of coordinating network meetings like uh, this uh, and uh, expert series insights, all of our uh, signature events as well. Jennifer, welcome. We're so happy that uh, you're here today. You know, we started this meeting, some of you weren't on the call and Bader, uh expressed uh, congratulations to uh, Lorraine uh, Donardis uh, Ascenza. Uh, I thought it was for something else. He was uh, congratulating her on uh, Forza Azuri's win <laughs> yesterday, uh, heading to the finals of the Euro Cup with who we don't know, Denmark or England, we'll find out about five o'clock this afternoon. But I thought he was uh, in, uh, congratulating her on her new opportunity. Uh, this is the last meeting that uh, Lorraine will be with mm -hmm. us. And she has been just a wonderful resource for Brampton businesses in the trade network and in many other uh, aspects, certificate she's managed our certificate of origin uh, service. And uh, she is moving on to Ontario's Ministry of Infrastructure. So I just wanted to let everybody know that and thank Lorraine for her great service 
and we look forward to staying in touch with her in her new role. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for announcements and kudos and congratulations. Uh, I see some happy clapping by Crystal and, uh, and others. Um, are there any other points to bring up? Questions, comments, smart remarks for the good of the meeting? Yeah, I will make a smart remark. We hosted the mayor of Fort Lauderdale and Tampa uh, here in Brampton six years ago, had a very robust engagement with them, uh, with the corporate uh, uh, presence, both from the Canadian side and Floridian side. Uh, Jack, it, there's a bad habit of dropping very good business contacts and business conversations just because of political changes. Whatever you're doing, let's make sure that it doesn't happen again. You know, I, I, I hate to see dialogues like that don't go anywhere and we don't, uh, sh we don't get to show the, the, the success that the business community can generate as a result of this dialogue. So just make sure that BBA stays involved uh, and we have an opportunity to build linkages with private sector. Uh, just because there's a political change down the road, you know, I hope conservatives stay in power forever, but let's face it, that's not how things work. You know, political cycles tend to be short term, business development activity tends to be longer term in nature. So let's make sure private sector stays engaged in whatever you're doing and we have an opportunity to build on it uh, from a longer term perspective. Definitely, brother. I, I think you touched a really good point. Uh, part of, um, uh, for me, and we're also looking into city to sister, city to city sister alliance agreements. And we had already approached um, uh, Alabama, uh, Tennessee, and uh, some cities, and also from Florida, also as well. Uh, so 100%, I think that's the way the connectivity happens. But to your point, it doesn't have to stay on the paper, like, and it has to be a robust kind of uh, a trade and exchange and business to business meetings. Uh, there is a lot of appetite there and uh, we can, uh, you know, dive into a little more discussion. That's the part of it. Uh, we're also, also doing, as you know, that Austin and uh, City of Toronto has a music sister city alliance agreement. Uh, and um, so, so those, so, so we are trying to replicate those uh, agreements also, uh, and that will be part of my some of the city mayors when I'm meeting with discussion on that. Great, great point. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Doug. Thank you, everyone, for your attendance. What a wonderful meeting! A great cross section of companies. Some excellent uh, questions. I know uh, Bob's put his uh, email in there as well. Beware, uh, ransomware hacks attacks. Bob is going to uh, do an expert series with us uh, a little later this uh, summer, um, talking about how we can avoid hacks and uh, attacks. And uh, uh, certainly that is a cross border uh, issue as, uh, as well. So thank you uh, for everyone today. Thank you, Jog. And uh, we look forward to continuing this conversation. Have a wonderful day, everybody. We'll see you again. Thank you, everyone. Soon. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Parash. Good to see you. Thank you. Bye, Todd. Excellent.